Hey guys, welcome to Bookish Islander. My name is Juan. I hope you're all doing very well. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the best novels of the 20th century, Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Mrs. Dalloway is Virginia Woolf's fourth novel. She wrote it between 1922 and 1924. The book was published in 1925 by Hogarth Press, which was Virginia Woolf's own publishing house. Clarissa Dalloway is the protagonist and the first person narrator of this novel. Mrs. Dalloway takes place in just one day as Clarissa goes around London getting ready to host a party at her home that evening. Mrs. Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself, for Lucy had her work cut out for her. The doors would be taken off their hinges, Rumpelmayer's men were coming. And then, thought Clarissa Dalloway, what a morning, fresh as if issued to children on a beach. As Clarissa goes around from one place to the next, she remembers her youth and wonders if she married the right man. She chose Richard Dalloway, who she considers to be someone she can rely on. But she had another suitor, Peter Walsh, who was a lot more enigmatic. Another important character is Septimus Warren Smith, a British army veteran from World War I, who suffers from shell shock, which is the condition that we now know as deferred traumatic stress. Some of these characters and others convene at Clarissa's party at the end of the novel. All of them are present at the party one way or another. But other than Clarissa, Septimus, Peter, and all the other characters, London and its streets are hugely important. If it weren't such a cliche, I would almost say that London is a character in the novel. But instead of saying that, let's look at the importance of location in this novel. So Clarissa lives in Westminster, which is the part of London where the British Parliament is. Her husband is a member of Parliament for the Conservative Party. So where they live and where the novel begins is important because politics are important in this book. Okay, then she's off to Bond Street and Bond Street is one of the most traditional shopping streets in London. Now we associate it with luxury stores, but Clarissa doesn't go there to buy expensive jewels or designer clothes. She wants to buy simple flowers for her party that evening. Then when she crosses um, St. James's Park, she meets an old friend, Hugh Whitbread, and then she begins to think and remember her former suitor Peter Walsh. As the different streets and locations in London intersect, so does Clarissa with the other characters. Now a mature woman of 52 years of age, Clarissa admires the taxi cabs and the omnibuses that she sees in London. All these fast means of transportation symbolize freedom and modernity, and more importantly, they were not available when she was younger and made important choices in her life important choices like the, the man that she got married to. So Clarissa is fascinated by the spectacle that the city of London affords anyone who visits or lives there. And I think that Mrs. Dalloway is great at capturing modernity. If you think about it, for someone who's Clarissa's age in the 1920s, the world has changed a lot during their youth. You would have been raised to travel by foot or carriage, maybe by train, and now there are buses and automobiles around. But the world of the 1920s is also a post-war um, world in Europe. World War I took place between 1914 and 1917, so we're just a few years after that. And we can see the consequences in the character of Septimus, but not only. Daily life, people's habits, their clothes, and even their manners have change and had changed at that point very rapidly in less than a decade and Mrs. Dalloway captures that conflict expertly. The British Empire and colonialism also feature in this novel, albeit in a subtle way. For example, the character of Peter Walsh, uh, Clarissa's old suitor, is Anglo-Indian. Mrs. Dalloway can be a disturbing read. Throughout the novel we get a sense of just how inadequate Clarissa feels in her life. She struggles with feeling worthless throughout the novel. It is also interesting that the two main characters, Clarissa and Septimus, never actually meet in the novel. But what happens to one of them will affect the other in a deep way. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, you need to read Mrs. Dalloway. One of the major themes of the novel is insanity. Mm, the mental health of the characters and how unstable they are. Uh, mental health is, is something to think about as you read Mrs. Dalloway. Mrs. Dalloway is one of the most powerful and challenging novels 
that I have ever read. Uh, the book really does challenge our tendency to put labels on people, even on ourselves. We now know that Virginia Woolf herself struggled with mental health problems uh, throughout her life. It is likely that she suffered from what we now call bipolar disorder, but her family just thought she was mad, she was crazy. We know that she was often depressed, and we know also that she committed suicide in 1941 when she was only 59 years old. So it is hardly surprising that she was skeptical about the medical profession and psychiatry in particular. This can be seen in her approach to the character of William Bradshaw in the novel, for example. I cannot stress enough what a departure this novel was, but if you want to see for yourself, all you need to do is read more conventional novels from that time and then compare them to Mrs. Dalloway. Here, Virginia Woolf tries to use the novel form to explore how the human mind works, or at least get as close to it as possible. Mrs. Dalloway is one of Virginia Woolf's best books, but I'd also add her remarkable novels Orlando from 1928 and The Wave from 1931 and her influential essay A Room of One's Own from 1929. Now, I want to know, have you read Mrs. Dalloway or any other books by Virginia Woolf? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again very soon. Bye bye.